Kraft route. Hello and welcome to Gall's All Access. I'm your host, Andy Zilch. Gall's rookie forward, Alex Limoges, has wasted no time making his presence known in the AHL. The former Penn State captain has already tallied his first professional hat trick, earned AHL Player of the Week honors, and made Gall's history in March, recording the most points in a single month in Gall's team history, and has scored the most goals by a rookie in team history. Scores! We sat down with Alex to discuss his hockey journey so far. How hot is Alex Limoges right now? Limoges picks up the garbage in the right spot and he makes roses. That is his fifth consecutive game with a goal. After a two-point performance last night, he continues to stay scalding hot. It's a pleasure to welcome Gauls forward Alex Limoges to the show. Take us through your childhood in general and then your travels in your early ages. I was actually born in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, and then at around two, I moved to Texas. And then around eight years old, I moved to uh, Winchester, Virginia. And I uh, spent the rest of my life there so far. So. Um, yeah, only about an hour and a half outside of D.C., which is uh, pretty, it's pretty nice. I guess you don't get caught up in that kind of traffic out there, but at the same time, you're never too far to go to a Caps game or, um, or anything exciting down there. What was it initially that drew you to the sport of hockey? Was it just kind of the atmosphere of Capitals hockey? Um, that's a good question. My, my dad played over in Germany, and... Um, you know, French Canadian, so we always said it was in the blood. And uh, ever since I could walk, I've been on skates. So uh, that's kind of how I started, was in Colorado after my dad's men's league games. He'd carry me out on the ice before the Zam would go. And uh, so that's where I kind of stepped on the ice. And then when I moved to Texas, I found a team um, at like four years old. And then ever since, I've just, it's always been hockey. So. What was your high school hockey experience like? That was a little unique, I think. Um, my first year of high school is actually when I moved away from home. I moved about an hour away and lived with a teammate closer to the D.C. area because um, they just couldn't do it anymore. It was too chaotic with the traffic and, and driving so many times a week. So, um, so I moved away then I think I was like 14 and then I needed, uh, I needed a little more and, and a little better uh, quality of life, I guess. So then I looked towards boarding school for my sophomore and junior year at South Kent School in Connecticut. And then senior year, I was uh, drafted to the USHL and went out there and played in Kearney, Nebraska. Save, rebound, score! Limoges! Limoges, deep, slot, shot, score! Goals in four straight games for the assistant captain from Virginia. So kind of all over the place, a little confusing roadmap, but... Uh, I wouldn't want it any other way. What was the mindset behind going to Penn State? Why did you select Penn State? And did you ever have any second thoughts of not going to college and maybe trying junior hockey in Canada? Like, what, what was the thought process there? Penn State, it was, honestly, it was just everything, um, everything I was looking for. You know, I didn't know at the time, but uh, I'd always been more attracted to smaller schools and a uh, more personable experience. And then I visited Penn State only three hours away from home. I uh, fell in love with the coaches and the atmosphere that, that the school had to bring. So, What was it like being the captain of the team and, and being the leader for that group? Uh, it was a lot of fun to be in that role. Uh, I had always wanted to be a leader there and, um, and I felt whether I had a letter or not, I, I was kind of in that position and you know, I felt like I, I knew what to do, but then COVID hit. So um, that brought a lot of challenges that nobody had ever seen before. And, and nobody knew what to do. So 
it was all right. We, we found a common goal near the end of the year of, you know, we, we want to win the Big Ten Championship and we want to have a shot at a national title and, and it didn't work out for us, but, um, but it's kind of what we find as competitors, like, uh, it's always easy, easy to rally around that championship goal. By Gates, Lamoge scores! Alex Lamoge! What was the progression of, of your mentality during that final year? Were you thinking, ah, maybe a team might go after me, might try to sign me, or were you like, all right, that's it, you know, once Penn State's over, my hockey career's over? How, how did that work out for you? Junior year was probably the harder year. I don't know, I wasn't really enjoying it to the fullest, I guess. My mind was in a few different places, but then senior year came around, it's like, okay, um, I know this is my last year now, so I'm gonna enjoy every second. Um, and I never really wondered. I, I'd always uh, had the dream of playing pro after, and um, so I, I made the most out of every opportunity I had, and then uh, when the season ended, I, I felt I was ready to, to turn pro. And then you did. So you, you get the contract from the San Diego Gulls. Well, what did that mean to you that it's going to continue? You know, I mean, it was a dream come true. That's, that's all I wanted my entire life is to play pro hockey. And, um, and now it's just one step closer to the NHL. You didn't have much time either to think, right? You, so how was that transition going across the country after your collegiate season ended to getting thrown against playing with with guys that are 18 to 21 to some guys that are 35 years old. Right. Yeah. Well, it, like you said, it all happened so fast. I was um, on my way into Sheets uh, going to get some sliders. And, um, and then I get the call. I was like, all right, hold on. I got I to gotta take this. And um, so I was like, holy crap. You know, I'm, I'm a professional hockey player now. And uh, at some point I had the feeling somebody's going to ask me, like, what's the first thing you did? Well, I went inside and I picked up my order and, and then I came outside, I called my parents and, um, and my girlfriend, but then, you know, I get a call later from the team and it's like, hey, how soon can you get out here? And um, I, I had a few things to finish up quickly with school, so, so I told her maybe like 24 or 48 hours and then, um, so then I was out here and was waiting for COVID tests to come back and, uh, you know, the little quarantine and then... I actually ended up going to sleep at 8 p.m. since the time changed and I was exhausted and woke up to my hotel phone ringing at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. saying, hey, you're allowed to come to the rink today. So uh, it all happened so fast. Next thing you know, I'm practice before a game and, and uh, but I think that was the way I wanted it. It didn't give me time to think or get nervous or build up any expectations. So uh, I kind of jumped right in and, and took off. Alex Lamoche, his first pro goal. Then front save, rebound Lamoche scores. Alex Lamoche, he continues to stay red hot. This season, we've seen an unprecedented number of recalls and player debuts with the Anaheim Ducks, the Gauls NHL affiliate. We recap all of the highlights on this edition of Gauls Grants. As we close out the 21-22 regular season, we take one final look at former San Diego Gauls players who have made the jump to the NHL to play with the Anaheim Ducks. We look at an overall perspective where this season 15 different players have appeared in a game between the Gauls and the Ducks. The list consists of Simon Benoit, Sam Carrick, Luke Ashtostal, Bo Brew, Brendan Gooley, Bryce Kendop, Jacob Larson, Vinny Letary, Mason McTavish, Sonny Milano, Danny O'Regan, Greg Patron, Jacob Perot, Braden Tracy, and Buddy Robinson. Of those 15 players, six made their NHL debut, including goaltender Luke Ashtostal, forwards Bo Grew, Bryce Kendop, Mason McTavish, Jacob Perot, and Braden Tracy. To look at the players that have competed with the Anaheim Ducks all season long, we will start by focusing in on forward Troy Terry. Entering last weekend's games, Terry collected 31 goals and 26 assists for a total of 57 points in 65 games played. Not only does the former golf currently lead the Ducks in points, but he also achieved his first ever NHL All-Star appearance this past season. Terry gets the feed in, scores! And Troy Terry, man, oh man, how often have we seen that this season? 
Secondly, we'll talk about forward Trevor Zegras, who not only once, but twice, dropped our jaws. Oh, it's a tail! Oh my goodness, what a goal! The magic of Trevor Zegras. He scores! Trevor Zegras, overtime, game winner! Nobody expects that to happen. He picks this puck up like it's nothing, but man, oh man, has this kid got some hands. That is something. The former Gaul has a total of 18 goals and 33 assists for a total of 51 points in 65 games entering last weekend's action. With Terry and Zegris each having a clear lead on the team in points, it will mark the second consecutive season that a former Gaul will lead the Anaheim Ducks in points. 15 players have graduated from the San Diego Gauls to skate in the National Hockey League with the Ducks. That just boasts the importance of not only the Gauls and Ducks relationship, but also the importance of the American Hockey League and the players achieving their goal to skate in the National Hockey League. Coming up, Gauls players and coaches surprise goaltender Luke Ashtostal with a custom t-shirt commemorating his goal and legendary catchphrase. Right here on Gauls All Access, presented by California Coast Credit Union. Gauls Elite Membership Deposits are now being accepted for the 2022-23 season. Join Gauls Elite and choose between different fan experiences and enjoy being rewarded for your loyalty year after year with increased benefits. Learn more by visiting sandiegogals.com slash Gauls Elite. And now Alex Limoges takes you on the ice with this edition of Gauls Miked Up. Here we go, Lars. Come on, boys. Come on. Let's go, boys. Let's have a period here. Let's get after it. Have a good warm up. Oh, that's a snipe, I need Nasty. Oh, that's a good battle. Oh, yeah, nice battle out of the way. Oh, yeah. Gonna be a good day here. Gonna be a good day. Hey, go, JP, go. Good rip too. Hey, keep getting there. We we cycle it and we come off like that. Right. That way, Axe. Right. Yep. Oh! Go, go, go! Hey, get right here, get right here. You go, you go, you go. What do you want to do? Go low or high? JP. Low? Okay. Hey, good face off there. Thanks. Can you like open up in front of the net or are you just trying to get back? Oh wait, go up. Hey, they're stretching, they're stretching. Easy, hey, hey, hey. Go, 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 go. Oh, no. Out of the way, boys. Good job. The team recently had t-shirts made to commemorate Luke Ashto Stahl's goalie goal in Colorado earlier this year. We had cameras there to cover the goaltender's reaction to the surprise. Kind of like I think hit, hit the glass and uh, just, just you know it was quite slow so I was just like I saw all the guys like on the red line so I just thought like yeah let's, let's try it. Joe Stahl going for it and empty net mid. He scores! No, 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 are you kidding me? Shoots and scores. Let's let's try it. Okay, so guys, as you get your T-shirt on, obviously we got to do a little something for Doss and his goal. What we did right now is we got Kalen and uh, and the Glasser talking to Doss about a plan for whatever I don't know. And I'm gonna go get him and say you're fucking late for the meeting. Let's go. So I'm gonna come in first and I'm gonna get out of the way. And I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna unzip mine, but Doss is gonna follow, and you guys fuck, get up, cheers. We need to be on time. Got it? You good? Okay, I forgive you. That's it, Doss. There you go, kid. Let's try it. Glasser. As a goalie, I'm usually in my bubble, right? So I was like, yeah, like, what's going on, right? <laughs> yeah. So I was so confused, I just walked there and like, 
I think I realized it like after like probably 10 seconds after. I was like, oh yeah, that's my shirt. Like, because everyone was start like uh, clapping, right? Like the guys were yelling. I was like, what's going on? You know, and then I saw the shirt and then, then obviously I realized it. So yeah. That was cool, cool moment for him. We were uh, unable to do something uh, a few days after. So I'm happy we were able to get something done for him because uh, it's not something you see every day. I, yeah, I figured they threw me on there to get a few more sales. <laughs> That's why he came to see me after practice. He goes, I don't understand. I wasn't late. I'm like, I know, it's, it was part of the, the plan to get you. Obviously, the goal was like really nice. So uh, when you guys made a shirt, like it's actually like, it's kind of an honor. Like it's really nice. I'm like, appreciate it. Coming up, we'll have part two of our sit down interview with Alex Limoges right here on Gulls All Access, presented by California Coast Credit Union. You've supported your team on the ice all season long, and now it's time for us to show our appreciation for you. Everyone is a winner on Fan Appreciation Night. That's Saturday, April 23rd at 7 p.m. when your San Diego Gulls host the Tucson Roadrunners. All fans in attendance will receive a scratch and win card with chances to win prizes throughout the evening. Get your tickets now at sandiegogulls.com slash tickets. The Gulls recently hosted their third annual Hockey Fights Cancer Night and had the opportunity to honor a member of the Gulls family. With the help of Gulls forward Hunter Drew, the Gulls presented the Santiago family with custom Hockey Fights Cancer jerseys celebrating the life of Gulls fan Edith Santiago, who unfortunately recently lost her battle with cancer. Hi Gulls fans, Hunter Drew here. Uh, we're gonna go uh, surprise a couple fans with some jerseys on Hockey Fights Cancer Night. How are we doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. I'm Hunter. We got a couple of gifts for you guys. You know, this is our first night, our first cancer night without our, uh, without his mom and my wife. She was diagnosed with, with cancer in 2014 and fought for seven, seven and a half years, lost her battle back in September of last year. And tonight is just, uh, it's hard to put into words, but it was emotional tonight. But a great night, uh, goals win, and just to come, uh, see everybody come out and support Hockey Fights Cancer um, meant the world to us and our family. We were definitely yeah, surprised. surprised. Yeah, we thought we were just going to answer a few questions first, and then, you know, and that would be it. Um, I was prepared to have a flood of emotions come okay. through, but this was a nice surprise, very nice surprise. Very you know, thanks to the goals for everything that they give us, you know, play on the ice, community interaction. Um, you know, we just love them. We just love them. We love it, being part of it. And now part two of our sit down interview with Gauls forward, Alex Limoges. Positioning the Gulls up ice, here's Lamoche, scores! We're tied again! Bro, cross helmet, and shoots, scores! And that's the hat trick! Bro, the hats! We talked about the AHL Player of the Week award, but that week also encompassed your first ever career hat trick. Take us through that night and what that experience was like for you. Uh, it, was, it was very cool to be able to score a hat trick and in the AHL. Uh, I hadn't scored a hat trick in like eight years and uh, I've been close many times, a lot of two goal games, but never seemed to be able to break that barrier. So uh, just the way it happened though, I think it was good with kind of, you know, in a dog fight and, and uh, had a fight earlier that game and the hat trick goal was, was the easiest goal with just putting my stick out and I'll be finding it. That's a hat trick! Alex Lamoge! They talk about the fight. 
How was that experience for you? It was your first fight in pro hockey. Yeah, first first fight ever. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hang on, like schoolyard fights, nothing? Nope, nothing. I was always a lover, always separating everybody, and um, I think I had two penalty minutes up to that point in the year. But that was pretty fun. I, you know, I kind of owed him one. I guess I hit him cheap. I don't know, but and not. I didn't really know the guy, but I knew he was a college guy and kind of knew where the league too. So it's like it was my it was my chance to kind of get into that. And I actually had a fun time. What a great job by Alex Lemos answering the bell. That's his first ever fight. You know, a little bloody knuckles afterwards, but in the in the moment, I didn't feel a thing, and uh, and I had a good time, but. Coming out of my phone after, it was kind of, uh, you know, my mom was like, hey, congratulations on the hat trick, but we'll talk about the fight tomorrow. So I, was like, I know she wasn't happy about that one, but, um, but I think maybe the hat trick made up for it. So. You talked about your hat trick goal and, and how it was a quick redirect. Well, the fans didn't realize that that was you that scored. And then the very next home game that we had, they, they thought they owed it to you to welcome you to the ice with hats. What was that like? That was crazy. Uh, I had never seen any, anything like that happen before. And so I just felt uh, special and honored. And, you know, I went out there. I didn't know what to do. I just couldn't stop smiling. And um, I can't say thank you enough to the fans. It was, it was so organized and, um, and so many people there with signs and hats. So it was, uh, it was a very special moment um, and a good start to, to that game. So. Well, Alex, I appreciate your time here today. Thank you so much and good luck the rest of the year. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. That'll do it for this show. Join us next time as we take a look back at the wild season that was and get you geared up for the playoff push. Thanks for watching Gauls All Access. We'll see you next time.